You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in Possible. Welcome, everybody, to the Border War podcast on the Kansas City Sports Network. We're presented by 360 Vodka. My name is Jared Sutton. I'm joined, as always, by Jeff Hawkins. Jeff, happy holidays. We're back at it, man. It's been a little while since we've had a pod, but uh, good to be talking hoops here as we, we uh, enter the holiday season here. Always. Holiday season. Always good to, to be in that holiday season, get to relax a little bit, eat a little bit, hang with some family, and watch some college basketball. It's a lot of sports going on, so uh, I'm excited for the holidays, and obviously, you know, uh, some really good basketball coming up between this border war that everybody's going to be looking forward to. Yeah, it's coming. It just felt like there around Thanksgiving, so many games coming left and right, yeah, you yeah. know, and then felt like March Madness, man. It felt like March like, Madness. Absolutely. And some great games too across college yeah. basketball. It's been fun to watch. And then it kind of hits this look right after the feast week, if you will, there's these, some tune up games, yeah. And you look, I mean, there's only three, four games, and you're like, man, league plays right around the corner. It seems flying by. So yeah. um, we got a big matchup to talk about here soon. Yeah. But first, we're going to dive into to the Missouri Tigers coming off a huge road win at Wichita State, um, a come-from-behind win, first true road test for Dennis Gates and his group. Did not have Isaiah Mosley in this game, uh, and they win in overtime, and – I didn't get to watch a lot of the game, but was following it and, you know, d- definitely went back and watched a little bit of the, the some of the clips of it. M- you know, Mizzou really found a way and yeah. you, you got to give them credit. A team that can find a way, a, a group that's all newcomers for the most part outside of a few. You're talking, you know, road game. You've had, you know, quite a bit of games at home, but going on the roads a different bear, especially going to Wichita State. It's a great environment for college basketball. And for Mizzou, yeah. you know, no Isaiah Mosley, Kobe Brown doesn't play all that well. And Jeff, I feel like every time we talk about this team, we talk about, you know, a, a, a top score that's a different name. Yeah. You know, the, you know, we, we, we have Noah Carter going for 20 and eight <laughs> to really carry Mizzou. And, you know, Des Moines Hodge was really good. We talked about Des Moines quite a bit. We've talked about Isaiah. We've talked about Kobe. Uh, Trago Millions, a big piece of this team. But great night for Noah Carter. Missouri gets a great road win. You know this too. Like when you get that road, when there's nothing like winning on the road. Yeah, I think is it, it's winning at home is great. You got to take care of your home court. But when you go win on the road, and it's kind of you, you're all you got. Kind of a kind of a vibe. Yeah, yeah. there's nothing like there's nothing us like against the world. The us against That's the right, world. Man. Especially when it's like okay, you know, that you're you're there's a lot of question marks about your team yeah. and all these unanswered questions, and and you go get a road win like that. It's a great feeling. Yeah, and. You know, kudos to to the Missouri Tigers, you know, for, you know, going on a, on the road. That was a big win for them. And like you just mentioned, you know, being able to get a win on the road because uh, teams go in there with that mindset is it's us against the world. Um, the refs are out to get us. The, the the fans are out to get us. Everybody. I mean, even the, the janitors out to get us. You know, he might not. He might leave some trash in our locker room. Like anything to mess us up mentally. It's literally every it's us against the world. And for them to be able to to come out on top and mentally fight through that game in an overtime game, and I think they really did a you know uh, they did a really good job. Uh, kudos to to Carter. Obviously, he did he did his thing uh, uh, stepping up. But again, we talk about uh, the Tigers being able to have so many weapons. Uh, one guy could be the, the the leading scorer. The next, I mean, who knows who's going to be the the next scorer? And I think that is very, that's very, uh, that's great on Missouri's part because that's that's a hard to scout. It makes you hard to scout when you don't know who's going to store score. But they really did this to me on the defensive end. They had sixteen steals uh, against. Uh, uh, Wichita State's three steals. So they were very active on the defensive end, and they only had eight turnovers, so under 10 turnovers. So I know it was a grinded-out game, but when you're going to have a grinded-out game, you got to be able to, for one, take care of the ball, and when you're still active on the defensive end through those ups and downs in a tight game like that, that's that's what makes me think Missouri's going to be a little bit scary team in the future. But, but kudos to – Coach Gates and uh, getting his team prepared for this this road 
test. And I think, you know, they've uh, they've now getting a little bit of doubt out of some people's heads that this team is serious and they don't care really who they're playing right now. They're just ready to get better and continue to, to, to buy into what the coach is saying. Absolutely. You talk about two, 10 lead changes in this game, six ties. Yeah. But I think what I think is really interesting is Missouri scores 88 points and they went one of 13 mm. from three in the second mm-hmm. half. And if you combine the OT period where they went over three, they were one of 16. Seven for 33 off. from the game. I know. And, and they still score 88. I mean, yeah. And they shoot the ball. Hey, I'll tell you this, Jared. They shoot the ball seven for 33, maybe last year. You, you'd probably that's take right. it. You'd probably that's take right. seven three. That's right. many shots. But like they took 33 threes, and I would not say they're going to shoot 21, 21% for the season. That Those numbers are definitely going to be higher. I'm not sure what they're actually shooting for the season. I need to make sure I get my fact check on that. But I know they're not going to shoot that percentage for the season. They had an off night, and they just grinded it out and win. What do you do? I always talk about, even with my team, what do you do when you're not making shots? I mean, you defend, you take care of the ball, and and that's what they did. Yeah, and you, you think, too, like some of these shots, it, it, it gets back to style of play, pace. Yeah. Missouri wants to play fast. Um, and, and coming from a system with Mike Anderson, when we, you know, we were the fastest 40 or whatever, I mean, yeah, we wanted to get up and down and shoot the ball. We had great shooters and and guys had green lights. But I think there is sort of a thought to, you know, situations, time and score, understanding what a good shot is. Yeah. You know, Des Moy Hodge, if he's open in transition and, and the, there's a push ahead pass and he's got his feet set, you want him to shoot the ball. You know, there's the, there's times I think sometimes where maybe they fall a little bit of a trap of maybe quick shots, right? Yeah. But yeah. But at the end of the day – they want to play where the possessions are high and they want to play when the pace is going. So yeah. you look at it, it, it sort of fits a, a style where they don't make shots from the second half. And usually a team doesn't get to 88 and usually a team that shoots that poorly from the second half and overtime, yeah. usually they lose the game, yeah. but it's the yeah. fact that they're playing fast yeah. and they're, they're still, I mean, they were great in the paint again. They had 48 yeah. points in the paint. Half their points came in the paint. So you're talking about a team that's probably going to be able to shoot the ball better than they did, but they're still they're, – they're scoring the ball in the paint. Yeah. And you look at their fast break fast break points, 26 fast break points. They had 29 points they're off running. turnovers. Running. And, they had tw- and, and they had 27 bench points. Yeah. It gets back to the depth of this team. Guys that go in the game can score. And yeah. they can force turnovers. They can play fast. They're doing it in a variety of ways of why that number and why, why they're one of the best scoring offenses in the country still – they're one of their, I think they're at the top of the SEC, if I remember right. If, 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 I think they're at the top of the league right now in terms yeah. of points per game still. And Wichita State's a, a good good opponent. It's good yeah. competition. And they get 88 on the road. I think that's a great sign moving forward. It is. And they, they have to stay locked in. And it's funny you mentioned that 48, 48 points in the paint. I mean, that's something to build off of, especially when you're not hitting shots. Because most of the time, I don't think when you're not hitting shots, sometimes those paint – those paint points are a little, those numbers are still a little bit low, but to still show. And again, that goes with the the pace that they're playing. You're playing fast. You're going to have more possessions. There's going to be more shots, especially when you're putting pressure on the defensive end. I think that is one of the things that, that, that is intriguing me. I'm a defensive guy. And when you can, you know, you can have 16, 16 steals in the game that shows your, your guys are active. They're locked in. It means so much more. Uh, I mean, and, I mean, Nick Honor had four steals, and I think every, if you look down the stat line, every person that played had a steal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> every yeah. person that played had a steal. So, if I'm if I'm coming up a team that's playing pressure like that, I'm a little bit nervous because I think that, that they're going to turn over some guys because they're all locked in. So I think that's one of the things that that uh Missouri I know we're talking about their their offensive surge that you know from from uh compared from last year to this year to me like what they're doing on the defensive end too that's going to be scary if they continue to have guys locked in uh and that's you had that I've never seen this really everybody that's played has at least had a steal that's locked in that is yep. locked in on the defensive end and 
uh, it's going to be fun to see kind of where they go with that. Three guys in double figures, 17, 19, 20, uh, East had, I mean, 17. I mean, those are, I mean, you got three guys scoring in double figures, high numbers, uh, double figures in a, in a grinded out win like that. And you didn't shoot the ball well. And you defended well and took care of the ball. Hey. That's a that's that's. I want that's that right. on my side. I want that on my side. <laughs> that's right. We'll we'll take a break. We'll be right back here on the Border War Podcast. Welcome back to the Border War Podcast, Jeff. We were diving into Mizzou's winning against Wichita State, and you mentioned right before we we went to break about the defense. And you know, I, I think a lot's been made of the offense, but they, they're getting better. I think their defensive transition yeah. has cleaned up quite a bit. They're under they're, they're undersized. They're going to play small. We know that. Um, my my thought is just the the depth of this team and the bench. Mizzou overcomes no Isaiah Mosley. Kobe Brown struggled. The the shooting we touched on, but you you win a game with Sean East getting seventeen points mm-hmm. off the bench. Nick Honor has four steals yeah. to lead your team. Those are your two pri- probably primary ball handlers. Isaiah Mosley can be a primary ball handler. He's probably going to play more of a two, but yeah. he can be a primary ball handler. That's what he was at Missouri State. Point guard play, we talk about all the time, so important. But Sean East has come off the bench, and I feel like he keeps getting better and better. To have a 17-point game, uh, very efficient. He's he's uh, you know a little bit more of an undersized guard. He's got great speed, great hands, great instincts. Yeah, He brings a great dimension because – you know, with, with Nick Honor, he is a veteran guard. He's not explosive blow by you. He can make shots, and he's he's a smart, high IQ player that doesn't turn the ball over. That's yeah. that's what Coach Gates wanted when he got him from Clemson. His assist to turnover was great in, 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 in limited minutes, too. With Sean East, you know, he comes from Juco, the Juco ranks. He was a big-time scorer, big-time Juco player. I've been really impressed with how he's just embraced his role, and it feel like now he's enhancing his role. Now he's mm-hmm. he's really just be, and and you look up and he's on the floor late in the game. You know it's one of those things. You were point guard yourself, especially coming off the bench and knowing you got to go in and you got to make some things happen. And and player efficiency is at the top of the list with yeah. Coach Gates. Sean East is doing that, and I think that's a big big thing. Looking down the road, where you look at the bench points and you look at the production, m- much of that you know Sean East has really carried the load over the last few games coming off the bench and really giving this team a lift. Yeah, he is. And uh, and kudos to, to Sean for, for stepping up, stepping up in a big-time moment in a big-time game on the road as well, too. And he did it from, from different categories as well, too. He rebounded the ball. Uh, he had assists. He, you know, he was showing that he could create and make plays for others, did it on the defensive end. Um, but, and again, and – kind of getting away from shot he's just a little bit another stat too that that kind of rung my bell with all 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 nine of those guys that played and all nine of those guys that had a steal like all those guys rebounded the ball as well too mm-hmm. like they all rebounded the ball and again these are just stats i'm not used to seeing in a team when everybody plays everybody gets a steal everybody's getting at least two rebounds I mean, and that means guards are rebounding. That means guys, when when you get your – Jerry, you know this, man. Guards don't like to rebound. So they like to let the big man go get the rebound so, yep. so they can outlet it to them so we can run, maybe mm-hmm. pitch ahead, shoot the three, get to the rim. And then the bigs <laughs> are like, man, let me just jog down because here go the guards again. But when you got your guards rebounding, uh, that just goes to show the engagement, how they are – what Coach Gates has them, how locked in he has them, but how they're playing together as a team because everybody feels like they have to do their own job. And kudos to Sean East because he's coming in really with high – I mean, I think five rebounds, solid enough for him, four assists, two steals, 17 points. I mean, if you can give half of that production, especially with some of these other guys that are going to be uh, – you never know who's going to score. I mean, gosh – I mean, yeah. that, I'm just talking about half of the production of that. I mean, they're still going to be doing good. So kudos to, to Sean East for definitely stepping up. Uh, but they're just playing together and collectively as a team. And it's, it's, it's going to be fun to watch them over the over the next course of the uh, the, se- the the few months. You, you look into, like, the, for a team that's undersized, and Wichita State has some size, they were minus one on the glass, hit 15 offensive rebounds. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, like th there's these stat sheets that you look at game to game. Toughness, man. Exactly. It's, and, and look, that's the word I use to describe this one is toughness. Yeah. I mean, to go on the road and, and I go back to like the next man up mentality we always hear, right? You have six guys yeah. play over 25 minutes. Yeah. Not one of those guys in that six is Kobe Brown, Aiden Shaw, or Isaiah <laughs> Mosley. You know what I mean? Like, which That's I think scary, those, man. Those, those three guys going into the year are like, man, those three guys, especially Aiden Shaw's a freshman, his athleticism. And th these are things that I, I keep getting back to the fact that they've yeah. won and they're 9 0, and a lot's been made of the scoring and the opponents they play. But if you look and dive into the team and 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 you look at guys that are stepping up and, and contributing yeah. and are productive, and then you look like they haven't really had everybody together mm -hmm. in sync playing what I think their roles are going to be down the road. They haven't really done that. Maybe one game that here and there where you really saw it and they, you know, they had over a hundred in that game when they all were on the floor and playing what I think their roles were going to be. But yeah, I think it's a, it's a weapon when you can show, especially against a Wichita state team, that's no slouch and, and they're a respected program in college basketball. Their environment is one of the best in college basketball. Yeah. That's a really big moment for this program in year one for coaches. That's just trying to build this thing. Yeah. A coach that's, you know, trying to build this thing, a coach that is building this thing. That's what I would say. Yeah, Man, he, he's building sure. this thing and he's doing a. I think he's doing a really great job uh, from the standpoint that he's really, he's really empowering everybody on that team to feel like they have a part in the team. And there's a lot of teams, you know, you can go to your blue bloods to, to your lower school. It doesn't matter. Like to have all guys feeling like they can contribute or have a, a, a chance to contribute, that's powerful. And that's that just goes to show that that is what the coaches, that is coach, what Coach Gates is giving them. He's he's letting those those young men feel empowered to feel like they can contribute, to give them the confidence. And I think that's what's to me, that's another big point too. I mean, there's so many things you could talk about the the scoring getting better, defense is starting to pick up. But like again, kudos has I mean, credit has to go to to Coach Gates for for coming in, turning this around, bringing a new energy. And these guys are locked in. They're locked yep. in. Yep. You look at ahead too. I mean, Semo today. Uh, we're recording on Sunday, and yeah. Mizzou, Mizzou gets. One more home game, and and then it's then it's on uh, with with the border war re returning to Mizzou Arena uh, for the first time since 2012. Yeah. And we'll dive into that a little bit, you know, down the next week here as we, we dive into to the game uh, with the game being next Saturday on the 10th. Um, but you you know for this this game today against Simo, I'm curious to see. First off, I I can't I can't confirm that Isaiah Mosley was sick or not. I I'm curious. You know, he didn't play, and I I think there's been some things that have been going on. You hope he's back and, you know, back to, to playing some yeah. significant minutes and you hope Kobe Brown has a, a better day and, and, and you hope they can kind of have a, one of those games where they kind of put it all together knowing it's not just Kansas that lies ahead for, for Mizzou. It's yeah. Illinois, it's Arkansas, it's yeah. Kentucky, it's the league. Uh, and so they're nine and zero, and they've done what they're supposed to do. And they got a chance to go to 10 and zero today. And that's a that's a great thing, uh, but it, it's going to start getting real. You, you, you're now in December. You're through. You know that that early portion of your season that was by design of how Dennis Gates put the schedule yeah. together. Which I, I every coach puts the schedule together how they want to do it, mm -hmm. uh, where the where the program is at, yeah. and every program's different. But um, they, they got to take care of business today, and I, I hope they can put some things together in terms of getting some of these guys acclimated. Together again, Isaiah Mosley, you know, Aiden Shaw didn't play a ton. Yeah. Uh, Kobe Brown didn't play. Yeah, and, and again, Coach Gates is going to play the hot hands. Uh, I yep. like that. He's going to yeah. roll. Yeah. He's going to roll with the rotation. You better that be ready is, to play. <laughs> exactly. And, and I think that's a great thing. But yeah, you can't look too far ahead. They got to take care of business today against Simo. That's right. Um, and I think I think they've done a, a really good job. You know, I think it's it's our job to to look ahead. <laughs> Uh, but I think you know Coach Gates and, and the Missouri Tigers uh, basketball team they've they've done a good job of, of taking it one game at a time and I think um, uh, it, it just shows in, in their win column you know they are taking it one game at a time um, because you know they had they had a couple of tight games you know where they had to grind it out and win and 
uh, that just goes to show the focus. So I, I think they are, uh, they are, you know, taking it one game at a, at a time, but again, you know, even, you know, even all teams know what opponents, you know, what they have a circle of big games as well too. Uh, and they, they, I think they circle those because they know uh, they have to make sure they prepare properly for that. So again, the Tigers know that, uh, what's going to happen, what's, what, what's on the 10th. The Jayhawks know what's on the 10th, uh, and they knew that at the start of the season. But I think they've done it. I think the Tigers have done a really good job with Coach Gates uh, of taking it one game at a time. It's going to be a fun one here to talk yeah, about soon. We're, we're almost to border war time. So yes. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll chat, get, get, we'll get the full – Rundown of the the matchup coming up December tenth. Yeah, we're gonna talk about this dub. Hey, yeah. we're gonna talk about this dub y'all about to get. We're gonna talk about that's this right. Dub that's right. We'll get. break down the Simo game, yeah. and then we'll, we'll look forward to uh, <laughs> to uh, the the matchup that we've uh, we've had circled for a long time, Jeff. So hey, I'll let As you all... be humble, man. I'll talk a little stuff for y'all. Hey, y'all gonna get this dub? Y'all got this. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> hey. I don't want to put too, you know, until the clock says zero. Uh, hey, I'm saying, things, hey, y'all right? like, got this, man. Yeah, all right, got Jeff, this. you heard it here first. You heard it here first. <laughs> Jeff's on it. Jeff's on it. Jeff, have a good week. We'll talk to you, you uh, too, talk to you next Happy week, man. Happy holidays. All right, brother, you too.